Welcome to the Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast. Let's start the show. Here are your hosts, Wes Ford and Zach Harris. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. We're back on the podcast. We're back. We're back. Uh, There's finally some movies starting to come out. Yeah. For this year, you know. Just Uh, trickling out. Tricklin, um, mostly Netflix centric, uh, which you know is fine. So we're that's what we're going to be talking about on this episode. We'll be discussing what we've been watching, followed by a review of the new David Fincher film, Mank, which is uh, playing on Netflix right now. Um, yeah. So tonight, I am drinking. That keyboard's going to get. I, I just I was pulling up the email. I, no, I'm I just I'm just be. playing. I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely funny. I'm I'm definitely can't like slyly look anything up while we're right. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm drinking a black mocha stout from Highland Brewing, a brewery in Asheville, North Carolina. Nice, nice. And I'm drinking the original Reaper, which is a stout from Half Acre. In Chicago, nice. Still got to try half acre beer. I love it. I'm a big fan. I've been a big tall boy guy recently. Like nice. the tall boys, Daddy likes. You know, it's just a little extra. You know, a little, a little extra, extra. You know, I don't extra need to beer. open another beer. I'll just have a big <laughs> one, big one. Just give me a longer you know? one. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, right. What's your uh, What's your percentage there? Not high. It's five uh, percent. Gotcha. I'm, I'm a six point two. Nice. Just curious, you know. I think yeah. that's a good. I like it's a that's a good number. I think like it's around rounded. six, six to seven is a good range. It's robust. It's gonna yeah. get. It's it'll get you there, but it's nothing wild. You right. Know I mean? I'm not trying to fucking get put down. Five know? is a standard beer, but it's it's a little too low. You know, you got to drink yeah, more of it, especially a stout. You know, mm-hmm. a stout um, you'd you'd anticipate higher. Yeah. You know. Right. Totally. Um, well, let's give it a sip. Cheers. Cheers. So I did try this before the cast, but this is a new beer I got for the podcast. Um, not a huge <clears throat> fan, just because I think because uh, part partly what we we're talking about is like the percentage, right? I kind of want it yeah. a little higher, and when it's uh-huh. just five percent and like a and a stout. It's sort of uh, there's not that bite. It doesn't have that bite. Yeah, I kind of yeah. almost want it to be a little sweeter, and that alcohol uh-huh. content sort of adds that. Yeah. Um. So, I, and I'm not like a huge stout fan to begin with. So, um, yeah, it's just real chocolatey, real, real coffee flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, not bad. It's just yeah. um, I kind of like personally for my stuff. It's I kinda a, like, a, st- a stoutsman stout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want like a casual stout, be good in cold weather. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I it just I'm not a huge fan of like the coffee chocolate with no reward on the alcohol. Yeah, I feel you <laughs> personally because I feel like the stout, it you you got that like creamy sort of like smooth angle to it, but yeah. you want that offset a little bit. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which I feel like this does. Half acre stuff is usually pretty like. Um, has that like strong bitter sort of like hoppiness to them, mm. and I feel like it carries through. So I'm a fan of this one. Um, and it's pro- it might even be leaning on the opposite side of the spectrum, where some people would be like, maybe it's a little little too bitter for my taste. You know? <laughs> too bitter, maybe. <laughs> but I like it. I'm a fan. So. Nice, awesome. All right. All right. 
Well, before we discuss what we've been watching, Ronnie, you got something to say? <laughs> hey, Ronnie, you um, approached us before the show and said that you <laughs> wanted to uh, have a special announcement, so here's your time for, for that. There you go. Go for it, bud. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio book download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M. Choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now back to you, Wes. If you like what you hear on this episode, remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and all other major plot, uh, <laughs> all other major podcast platforms. Podcast plat. Plop, 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 plop. <laughs> Not even drunk yet. <laughs> all right, let's 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 get into our episode. Uh, we're going to talk about what we've been watching. It's been a while, so I'm sure we've got a decent list yeah, I I would say not. I don't have the most intriguing list. As we were just discussing before we recorded, I got a Switch recently, so... Yeah. <laughs> Been a lot of, like, throwing on trash movies and then playing Switch during the movie for me. That sounds so enjoyable, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty great. I'm not... But it sounds not, so nice. not a lot of, um, you know, super great, like, man, I recently discovered this gem, you know? Right, right. Yeah. That requires your full attention, and you can't. Yeah, exactly. Can't do that if you're. I can't play Zelda while I'm watching that. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Well, uh, you got anything to start off with? I guess one good thing that I watched is I watched the the Truffle Hunters, um, which is a documentary about a uh, a group of truffle hunters. And, truffle um, with an F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and they're all like old men who uh go truffle hunting with their dogs and i gotta say it's just a delightful <laughs> documentary sounds a amazing great a lot of great wides of uh old men just bickering about how the truffle game isn't what it used to be <laughs> and uh a lot of really cute dogs um i mean it also you know has uh, has some good things to say it is like very uh you know poetic and nice and uh I don't know. I just had a big old grin on my face the whole time and um, just thought it was really nice. Really liked it a lot. Sounds delightful. Do they do they discover anything new or is it just sort of follow them? It's sort of around? just like following a bunch of different um, truffle hunters and there's just kind of like the way things are changing. Like they, they it, it is kind of them being like, yeah, truffle hunting ain't what it used to be, you know. But it's also cross-cutting between um, the hunters who are these, you know, like guys who just like working class people who just sort of like you know in the own land and they just go out with their dog in a truck and like find truffles but then yeah it'll transition to the like truffle sales like and where they end up and there's like like brokers and it's almost like the art world where it's like these people like in this like stark white sterile room like sniffing truffles out of wine glasses you know paying like thousands <laughs> for all these because they're very like precious like things oh you know yeah what I mean? totally so it it is an interesting juxtaposition when you have just like i don't know these two old men just like jabbering on and then you cut to that just interesting a woman in a fur coat sniffing being like i don't much care for this truffle you know and right like, sniffing it out of a wine glass um what a perfect snapshot of society. You know? Yeah, exactly. So it plays a lot with that sort of like juxtaposition of stuff, but um, it was really, really good. It was on uh, Doc NYC, I think, in mid November. Um, I didn't watch anything else on there, but Sean had recommended this. So nice. I jumped on it and it was um, very nice. It was a delight, although parts of it sad. And um, I feel like my memory is already fading up of it and i watched it i don't even know like three weeks ago so right (laughs) it's weird (laughs) what's time anymore i know right um about as far back as i think i want to go uh (laughs) is i'm i'm i want to talk about um the queen the queen's gambit oh nice so yeah but i heard it's good yeah it's a it's a netflix miniseries um 
and I kind of like saw it a lot on Netflix in the queue and I just didn't like pay much attention to it. And then I kind of heard mm-hmm. stuff about it and I was like, I'll just watch, I'll just check it out. Watch one. And I got hooked. I got hooked like right away on the first episode. Um, and so I, I plowed through it. I think it's only, I don't know, six to eight episodes. I don't remember exactly, okay. but it, um, I do think it started off really strong and then like near the middle, <coughs> it sort of lingers and has some issues mm. but then it, it kind of finishes off like real strong satisfying um if anyone doesn't know and because of this show it's kind of crazy is um chess is becoming very popular again because of this show um, oh yeah i think google reported like uh, i don't quote me on the numbers but like 300 percent increase in searches of chess and like people are buying <laughs> chess sets from Am- uh, yeah. amazon and shit um but it's about it's about a fictional story of based on a book about this young girl who uh is a genius and she starts off um learning chess at a very young age and then she just becomes a master and it sort of follows through her life as she grows up she goes to the chess championships and becomes like uh, you know, and began in the end, she's like a master champion. And, um, it's kind of, it makes me sad because it's not real. Cause I kind of wish it was, cause it's about this girl in like a male dominated yeah, scene of like chess players. Um, but I don't know the way that it's played is very, it's very satisfying to watch, very entertaining. And it makes <clears> chess <throat> just like, I want to, I want to play chess, you know, like I, <laughs> yeah. like, it seems so interesting again. Um, so anyway, it's, 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 um, definitely, I recommend it. Um, great Netflix watch mini and then yeah. it's just a mini series. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with it. Really enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's nice. Qu- I got to check Queen's it out. Gambit. I've seen it on there, but, uh, you know, I haven't, haven't checked it out yet. Yeah. Um, I didn't talk about Mouse Hunt last time, did I? Mouse Hunt? Yeah. You might have. Did I? When did we record last? Uh, <laughs> like, October, end of October. Oh, no, I didn't then. I didn't. Because I watched it November 12th. I watched it on my birthday. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I watched Mouse Hunt. Uh, have you seen this movie? No. Um, it's a Gore Verbinski movie, which oh, I forgot forgot about from the late '90s with um, Nathan Lane, and I guess Lee Evans. I wasn't as familiar with him, but um, I knew he'd been in stuff. But uh, so it's kind of like a it's almost like Home Alone in a way. It's like a weird, uh, huh? Kind of like super goofy, um bumbling moron into trap movie if that makes sense so it's like these these two brothers inherit this old house and they find out it's like made for by this like super prestigious like architect and um they inherit their house from their dead father or whatever so they're trying to fix up this house but there's just like a mouse that is just fucking with them Uh and it's just them like progressively like destroying the house basically because they're trying to catch this mouse and it's so stupid but honestly holds up <laughs> incredibly well the movie fucking rules I'm i just look i just looked that up dude for real dude you gotta watch it it's fucking sick i love it mouse looks so hilarious. like so silly it was my me and like my <sighs> childhood friend when i was in like elementary school every sleep it was like a sleepover movie for some reason every time we hung out we would watch this movie that's hilarious so, so i hadn't seen it since i was like a really little young kid you know so i was like seven yeah. or eight probably and i like watched it again because i'd been wanting to and honestly it's fucking good it has like a weird like coen brothers vibe <laughs> to it like interesting it look it looks really good it looks like weird and grim and like christopher walken plays an insane um exterminator in it and it's just it's just great i really like this movie a lot um <laughs> amazing five out of five it fucking rules uh, 
So I would highly recommend it. It actually kind of looks familiar, like the poster and stuff. Like, I mm. feel like I was a kid when I kind of heard about it, but I'm not sure I've, I've yeah. watched it. I had no idea it was Gore Verbinski until yeah, I that's was amazing. watching it and it started. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's great. It's a great kids movie. And it's also just a great movie. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> telling you it's like it's like three four bucks to rent on amazon or something yeah worth worth the rental although (laughs) i so we watched it and i was like all right well i have to buy this movie you know so i was like not on blu-ray in any country start looking around (laughs) it's on japanese laser disc i'm like all right should i hunt down this oh my god dude (laughs) but um it'd be kind of amazing day later announced on blu-ray like less than a week after I watched it, I that's was like weird. amazing. Yeah, very yeah. weird. So it's coming out on Blu-ray next couple of months. <laughs> I will not be buying it. <laughs> no, I, honestly, maybe you should just wait, buy the Blu-ray, watch it then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's Is it coming a out in UHD. Yeah, I fucking wish, dude. That'd be that'd sick. be kind of amazing. Yeah. I would pay a lot for a mouse hunt in UHD. I would pay yeah. a lot for it. <laughs> I love mouse hunt. I love it. <laughs> so good. Usually, it's just like so refreshing because mm-hmm. usually, and I'm not trying to say it, there's like it's squeaky clean and there's like no problematic things in it or like things like of that. Of course, there yeah, definitely yeah. are, but it's rare to me that like I do because I, I like to do those revisits, but it's always disappointing because you're like, yeah, right. this was made for me when I was eight and I watched it right. then, and totally. like, yeah, it makes sense. I don't like it now. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Like, I but. Honestly, I was like, "Damn, eight-year-old Zach with still holds up, on. huh?" It's like, yeah, it's uh, it holds up very well. It's a killer. That's movie. rare. Yeah, that's very rare. rare. Worth the watch. Please watch um, it and let me know what you think. <laughs> let me know if I'm just insane or if this is. I might have to watch it. I might have to watch it. Um, I have a little one now, so maybe that's something that I just sort of put on. Yeah, I've been I've been watching stuff with. I mean, she's a baby; she doesn't know what's going on. So I've been watching yeah. stuff with her, and she'll oh, watch nice. the screen. So that's oh hell yeah, yeah. Um, any any movie that she's reacted to like most? Well, good segue. Speaking of which, I oh, rewatch yeah. I rewatched all the Hobbit movies. And I watched oh, them with nice. her. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Obviously, she did you get the four Ks or were you just watching through them just for fun? I watched them HBO Max. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I um, saw they were put on there. I haven't seen them since... I, I actually have seen the first one, Unexpected Journey, mm. twice. But other than that, I've, I hadn't seen the other ones since I saw them in the theater. For sure. So I'd only really seen them, like, once, or, and then the twice, like, the... So, like, mm. it was... Um, I was like, you know... I was like... And I was in a good mood for, like, The Lord of the Rings at the time, and I was like, I'm gonna give the Hobbit movies another shot. You know, yeah. I... I I wasn't a big fan of them when they came out. Um, but I was like, they're fantasy yeah. movies. I'm like, check this shit out again. Yeah. And I did I it would... earlier in quarantine, and it was a similar okay. thing. Hadn't seen them since theaters. But anyway. Oh, okay. Same experience. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I was I was pleasantly surprised in the beginning. The sort of um, they were they were a little better than I remembered them. Um, yeah. I thought they were like a little yeah they were a little better overall. Um, I kind of bumped each one a half star. Mm-hmm. Um, still not Lord of the Rings, but um, by any means, and they get worse as they go on, in my opinion. They do. Yeah, like the first one's the best, and the second, and then third. Absolutely. Um, but uh, I don't know. Something about that, especially that first one, is really like really fun, really enjoyable. Like a, just like yeah. cool fantasy movie. Like we don't see this, you know. Like, um, and I love. I mean, and I'm a big fan of like uh, Gandalf the Grey. You know, mm-hmm. before he becomes a white, and just seeing him be a wizard and like do more spells and shit, like I I play D and D, so this it like made my yeah, nerd fun. part happy. Um, yeah. Anyway, and it's also one of my favorite books, and, and I do hate that it was extended out to um, three movies. Yeah, it's definitely not ideal. That's not ideal, sure. <clears throat> but um, it does some interesting stuff with it. I think it tried to add some of its own elements mm. um it, it did it obviously add, had to add more plot and I think some things are successful most weren't 
But um, yeah, I don't know. I overall, I thought they were better than I remembered. They were still enjoyable in some aspect. But like that last one was just not very good. It's a slog, man. It's yeah, tough. It's a like, slog. And I'm like wanting to like it the whole time. I'm like, oh, just finish strong so I can like these. I know. A lot, you know? And I'm not saying I don't like them, because I do like them, but they're ju- they're not as good as you want them to be, I feel like. Um, no. I think I the agree biggest... that the first one's good, like pretty solid, mm-hmm. though. Yeah, yeah, the first one's pretty solid. I, I gave a three and a half. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, that one's real fun. But I, I think at the time I was so angry because of the look of them at the time, and I yeah. was just angry that they made a trilogy out of this one because it just didn't yeah. need to happen. It's annoying. It should have just been like a mini series or something. Like at yeah. this point now, yeah. Like, right. if they were made, just make a fucking, like, cool miniseries out of it. You know, times are a little different now. I feel like they... they oh, pop- yeah, totally. It, it could have been made <clears throat> in that direction, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Because three movies is just too long. But at the same time, the way that they're at, like, where they're at in the runtime of them, I think they're too short also. You know what I mean? Because, right. like, they, they overpack them with ideas to, like, justify the length. But right. because there's so many ideas, none of it has, like, the time to breathe that I think it needs. I agree. It sort of it lends itself, like you said, like the miniseries. I mean, the miniseries could be technically the same length as these movies, but it's it it's the format that it lends a different format, you know, yeah. to that. Is yeah. where it's not broken up into two, two, three, two and a half hour movies. It's, um, you know, like seven hour episodes it adds a different sort of um, yeah because there's a lot of obligations that come with like having to be a movie that costs that much you know so like the second movie is weird and the way it ends is yeah weird. and it, it's it like doesn't work. i remember at the time having to wait a year after it i was like pretty bummed you know i, I was know. just like man like what the fuck <laughs> like, um right. but one thing I did really enjoy again that I didn't like, I guess that didn't, like stuck with me the first time, but seeing it again is that because I had watched, rewatched all of the, I think we talked about this earlier in the other pa- uh, podcast um, a few back, but we both watched like all the extended editions. Yeah. Uh, rewatched them recently. And um, so building off of that somewhat recently, uh, seeing sort of these characters come back that I didn't remember. Like there was a lot of like a lot of characters that came back from Lord of the Rings that are. Oh yeah, totally. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is kind of cool on a certain level Mm. to, to see that. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, Quick, quick question though. Yeah. Did you watch the extended hobbits or the theatricals? That's a good question. I, I don't think they have the extended, on HBO Max, so it's yeah. probably the theatrical. Because I've never seen the extended of them. Because when we rewatched it, um, I haven't either. Then you couldn't rent the extendeds, and I was like, I'm not gonna buy them on Blu-ray because they come out on 4K in like four months. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna buy these. Um, so I just rewatched the theatrical. So I haven't seen the extended. So I'm curious. Yeah. If maybe it gives it the kind of like pace that it needs, but. But also, also it's, like, just, it's like even longer, you know? It's just, yeah, uh, exactly. I'm not like super <laughs> enticed to see because yeah. I don't love it, but I do think that maybe it would help it. Yeah. But yeah. Who's to say? Anyway. They're, uh, they just left HBO Max, so I was able to finish them before they, oh, nice. before they left. So. Um, oh, yeah. I'm glad to do that. <clears throat> I've been watching uh, Berlin Alexander Platz which is a 15 and a half hour long movie <laughs> by oh my God. Rainer Werner Fassbender, um, which has been like, uh, it was like such a thing in high school just because of the length. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we were all like, whoa, because we were, I was like really into Criterion and we were just like, it's Criterion's 15 hours. Like, oh shit. You know, it's it so like, crazy. Yeah. So crazy. Um, 
And yeah, so I finally got around to watching that since knowing about it for so long. I've always wanted to watch it. <laughs> um, and it's actually a really funny one to like be wanting to watch forever because it's just like really depressing. But um, <laughs> it's basically just about this guy in Berlin in the 20s who gets out of prison um, for murdering a woman. And uh, it's basically just him like adapting back into society and... Um, kind of getting like caught up in like a sort of like soft criminal underworld in a way but um not necessarily in like a thriller way Hmm. uh very fassbender um in tone i guess but definitely more visually ambitious than some of his other stuff and uh it's it's divided into parts so it's basically like a series i think it aired on television so it's a it's a series but it's also referred to as like you know in the way that David Lynch is like, it's a film. Twin yeah. Peaks is a film. It's like, it's a film. Um, <laughs> so, it's really good. And I'm really liking it. I've been watching, like, usually one a day, but one day I watch four. Um, and I think I'm <laughs> eight or nine hours in. Uh, oh, you and, didn't even finish it yet? No, I haven't finished it. I'm, like, halfway through, because there's... I think I, wa- I watched eight earlier... So then there's 13 parts and then a two-hour epilogue. Um, I've heard the Jesus. epilogue is something to behold, so I'm excited for that. How many but, discs um, is, it, is it? I think it's four. Four discs. Okay. Blu-ray? Yeah, I picked up the Blu-ray. Wow, um, four Blu-ray discs. Yeah, it's a lot. It's dense. There's like five or six, five or six hours on a disc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very good though and it's it's super entertaining but it's also really slow and meditative um feels really authentic in a way and uh i mean it's also just material that's hard to watch like you're following this character who got out of prison so they initially framing it as like i mean it it'd be tough for anyone to get out of prison but eventually when you like learn what he's done and see what he does you're like man this guy sucks <laughs> you know like this guy's a piece <laughs> of shit um but it's it's also just interesting to see how um he's just kind of like echoing off other people and it goes on a lot of like interesting tangents um obviously has a lot to say about the time 20s berlin it's uh you know pretty uh a lot going on a lot starting up over there right uh, which they touch on um some still disturbingly relevant things happening but it's still i mean I'm, i've watched this thing for like eight hours and still not quite sure where it's heading um plot wise so that's interesting but very interesting i mean if you find yourself with 15 and a half hours to spare i would definitely <laughs> recommend it <laughs> thus far we're um, in quarantine we might have that yeah um it's very good the performances are incredible and um like i said it's not it's very good but it's also very depressing and uh maybe not the best thing i should wake up every morning and start my day watching but i've been doing it and it's simultaneously satisfying in a way so it's on criterion channel which i didn't know until after i bought it on blu-ray so (laughs) Good to know, good to know. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so when I watched recently um, was, uh, I got, Sean recommended this on his social media. Um, everyone doesn't know. Sean is a big supporter of the podcast, big, big friend of ours. Um, yeah. And he's always on our annual countdown yeah. movies which we'll be doing this year for sure we can Absolutely. talk about that later yeah. but um <laughs> so there's a there's basically like a series um called small acts um that's like a series of like sh- uh, sort of shorter films but they're really like long they're like I think films. the first one's pretty long right the first one's like two hours isn't it the first one's like but two hours I think the rest of them are pretty short yeah, they're all kind of short. Um, but the one specifically, I went straight to... I, I still haven't watched the first episode of Small Axe, but I did watch the second episode, and they're all self-contained. 
um, films <clears throat> by Steve yeah. McQueen. Uh, the second one, which is getting a lot of buzz, is called Lover's Rock. And uh, I watched that, and it's only it's it's literally seventy minutes long. Um, Love a seventy minute runtime. That's beautiful. It's the perfect length. It's it's yeah. like really the perfect length. Um, and these are on Prime Prime Video, by the way. Um, it's it's really good. It's really good. Um, it just I I. It's hard to describe, but it's sort of like an ex- it's like an experience of. Um, like if you've ever been just like to a party at night, you know, mm-hmm. if you've ever gone to like a night party or like a concert, um, it's really encapsulates that like that kind of like wild fun night of being at a party. You get all mm-hmm. the experiences um, of being there, the arrival, um, the different <clears throat> types of people that might be there, the different kind of ups and downs that you might experience through that. Um, and it happens to be in the setting uh in 19 in the 1980s in london Mm -hmm. of um these groups of people coming together to do like a concert and do to to do like a rock dj sort of um sort of jamaican different types of music um concert party that they're doing at this house um and it follows really these two characters who meet and and fall in love um Mm -hmm. at this at this party um and there's something about it that just it's so it has like an effortless feeling to it Mm -hmm. it's just it just it moves so nicely it's it moves from scene to scene just like sort of flawlessly um has this feeling there's there's real not a lot of plot it's really just sort of you're feeling the vibe you're feeling uh this energy and this emotion of being at this dance party there's like one scene where they're like dancing real intimately and there's something about that that like stuck with me like the music the vibe i just like kept thinking about it and i was just like you know i was just like sort of snapping my fingers and like i don't know it's it's like dancing's fun and remember when we used to do that <laughs> yeah totally. you know remember when we used to be in groups of people um uh, uh it's a real good vibe movie that just it's sort of like a snapshot of one one night and into the into the next day of this of these people experiencing this little this little blip in time and um mm. i really found that just really kind of nice you know and oh, yeah. and and the fact that it does it yeah like just so effortlessly mm. um is just it, it's just you gotta you gotta experience it so um yeah, I'm definitely curious to check out the other films. Like I said, I haven't watched the first one. Um, I heard that one's a little sad, but definitely curious. Steve McQueen's a fantastic director, so yeah, um, totally. got to check him out. But I went straight to that second one, and if, if there's any that you have to see, at least I could recommend that one. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Small Axe, Lover's Rock. It's 70 oh, minutes, yeah. nice, good feeling to it. Yeah, yeah, I got to watch nice that. Nice and short. Gotta watch all those. I'm yep. a Stephen Queen fan, so yeah, definitely got. I gotta check out the others, but yeah, check it out. Prime Video. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot else. I guess I watched. It's a while ago now, but I watched Possessor. I still gotta catch that man. Um, it's worth watching it's, for sure. It's good. Yeah, it's good. You liked it. Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. Um, okay. I do think there are some drawbacks to it. Uh, it didn't kind of end in a very satisfying way for me Mm. but i do think a lot of the things that it does are interesting and um in terms of like a new like weird sci-fi thriller type thing it's definitely an interesting take i'm into it on all that and um the way they present a lot of the technology and stuff very cool there's some weird uh techniques that are used at times that i really like and uh yeah i'm not the i'm not the biggest fan of fuck what's his name christopher abbott is that his name yes he's in it quite a bit not Hmm. the biggest fan of him but i think he was pretty good in this um but i like the actress who's in it who is in um oh yeah i didn't really like mandy but i liked her in this yeah. Oh, the girl from Mandy. Yeah, um, but she, I, I also 
I don't think it's her fault. I just think she didn't have anything to do in Mandy. When you just stand around, there's not a lot to... No, that wasn't her fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was cool. I thought it was definitely worth a watch. I know it's coming out on UHD sometime this month. I'll probably oh, cool. buy it. Um, I'm planning on watching it. I do want to. I yeah. do want to catch it. It's definitely worth watching. There's a lot of really cool shit in it. It. Uh, what is, What do you rate it? I think I gave it a four. Okay. Oh, right, that's um, good. That's and great. I think it. Could, yeah, it could go up on the rewatch too. Okay. It, and it so was. You liked it. it was. It was coasting at a five for like a good bit of it. But okay. It, the end. Something about the end just kind of like didn't really sit gotcha. right with me. Um. And then I kind of found myself like in like a logic loop thinking about it. And then yeah. it gets to the point where it's like, I don't really care. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, you know, it's like, I'm thinking about this too much. Like, uh, yeah. but I do think maybe a rewatch would help, which I intend to do. And even though the end kind of stumbles a bit, I still think it's really worth watching for sure. It was cool. one of the, I'm looking forward one of to the it. better ones I've watched. At least, especially, I have, feel like there's not not been a lot of like genre stuff this year that's been like really quality. So it's yeah, good. Barely been anything, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like the stuff that's coming out, I feel like is yeah. also like dramatic or like documentary or like totally something like that. So it's nice to see something that's like kind of just like pure genre in a way. Not like that it. it's like you know i don't know mm-hmm. i don't know what the hell i'm talking about <laughs> beer's getting to me <laughs> um i guess uh well i got like i can combine two and then i got one more i don't know what you're looking okay. at i got i got a couple things but nothing else super in depth but lay them on me all right well i'll, I'll combine these two i did two rewatches both 2019 movies that i liked at the time mm-hmm. um I still do. I, I I rewatched The Lighthouse and I rewatched Midsummer. Nice. It's summer, however fuck you want to say it. Um, <laughs> director's cut? Normal cut. I didn't watch the director's cut. I nice. normal you cut. Watch that director's cut, bud. Well, I bought the regular one oh, way I gotcha. back, so I just sort of watched that. Um, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Okay, fair enough. I do need to catch. The duly noted. Cut, duly noted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, but Lighthouse. I will say I. I liked more this time. Um, it's a rewatch movie. It's a rewatch movie, and what really helped was putting on the sub- subtitles. Yeah, I put mm-hmm. the sub. I've actually it's sort of been a, a habit that I've had on because having a baby. A lot of the time, I'm yeah. forced to like watch movies or content or shows. Mm-hmm. Normally, when she's sleeping or something like that, so you, you don't want to wake the baby or whatever. So I yeah. A lot of stuff I've been watching with subtitles, and I sort of gotten used to it. Um, I kind of like it now because I sort of know what's going on. But um, the lighthouse definitely helped because I really could. F- that was one thing that was a little hard to follow when I was in theaters was yeah. the language is so it, within its realm and from mm-hmm. that time that it's 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 almost like a foreign language at times. It's that's how the witch was too. Yeah. Um, at first watch and then you get to watch it and you understand but the rewatching the lighthouse having the subtitles I, I i liked it more i kind of got to just accept it for what it was i think before i had some exp- like hard expectations on it i was like I really excited for it yeah and um going into it knowing what it was and just trying to enjoy it um was a better angle and yeah. uh yeah i liked i just liked it more and sort of accepting it as like a, a, a folk tale and understanding the plot a bit more um mm-hmm. yeah i liked it so yeah. that bumped it up a half star to four for me nice yeah yeah i think i i expected it to be kind of big in a certain way yeah like when i was when i was anticipating it it felt like it was going to be really big and it ended up that it's like really small and it, probably That's even right. smaller than like the witch so yeah. I think that's where me, at least the first time I saw it, I was like, it was, I mean, it's undoubtedly good, but I was like disappointed, but yeah. I do think the rewatch, I was like, you know what? This is really good. Like, yeah, the performances are great. It looks so cool. Are, like it looks so good. Incredible. Yeah. And you know, we'll, we'll get into it a bit later, but it's the way if you're trying to do that look that's the way to that's the way to do it you know what i mean if you're doing that black and white vintage look that's the way to do it you know oh man it looks so spot on like for the time like especially like i even remember even from the trailer i thought was so cool but 
Um, but like the shot of 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 um, not Willem Dafoe, the other one, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, Robert Pattinson, and like the water when yeah. he like he goes he like wades into the water and the water is like kind of reflecting like underneath his chin mm-hmm. and his like expression is a like it's such a snapshot from that era you know yeah. from like the 40s 50s totally. it looks so legit um and it also it, is composed so, in a way that like really echoes that but yeah. is also new and like well, they completely... go places where the camera couldn't before, like the shots flat. Oh yeah, where it tracks up the whole lighthouse. Totally. So it's like it does things like that to kind of like advance the style, but it's also very like accurately steeped in like that older yeah. look in a positive way. And just sort of something cap something about capturing that. Um, it's even like hard to describe, but like capturing that sort of like niche story that like little Mm -hmm. bit of like the old sea lore sort of um you know new england just like lighthouse lore sea lore i don't know there's there hasn't been a lot of content about just like yeah that that folklore vibe vibe, and that really jives with me i don't know there's something Mm -hmm. about that that i really sort of dig uh just getting that little like just the old legend sort of yeah and it's, you really it's in a feel weird that. time because it's like almost like a fantasy realm, but it's right. also kind of like anchored into like the early sort of mm-hmm. like civilized. It's like, like early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, so it's like you're getting into the more modern era, but it's also right. very much like about all the sort of like fantasy aspect. It's so honestly it's like one, an one of my favorite time mix. periods. Yeah, yeah, like late eighteen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds, like uh, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, also. To, to move on quickly uh midsummer rewatch that that one down a little yeah. bit for me yeah i haven't rewatched that one yet i st- i still uh, there's still large portions of the movie that i really like and just enjoy like the main concept of mm-hmm. um i really like seeing just the cult vibe and and yeah. having like a the tone and the way it was shot the, the conflicting mm-hmm. juxtaposition of that, like the bright light with like the horror element was it's great. Very cool. Um, but I think, I think it just doesn't, it doesn't quite nail what it's trying to do. No. Um, and there's a lot of things that fall short. The, the script is sort of kind of all over the place. It's, it's uh, hard and you don't want to constantly compare it to hereditary, yeah. but it is hereditary was so focused and neat that yeah. like transposing that style kind of visually to a new thing but like story wise is kind of all over the place i feel like the the two like vibes don't like totally gel yeah and it just and, and not even just like that too i think it's like literal writing process was just yeah like i mean it's been out i can say like the like the the weird and in, and in, inbred kid never explain so unnecessary unnecessary just like random flash it's just like what is happening with that um yeah there's just like things that just like aren't fully described or explained but um anyway i still enjoy it i still like i still like the movie but i just think it wasn't didn't have quite the same impact on me the second yeah, watch i feel that I, I am interested to see the director's cut yeah, me but too. I feel like I would be more interested to see a trimmed, like, tight 90 cut. Because the way it sits, yep. it's kind of like The Hobbit, where it's like you, you're, you have this bare bones story that's, like, good, and there's kind of all these extraneous things that are, like, out shooting out from it that, like, I want to know more about. And so, like, I'm thinking about that while I'm watching the stuff that's good, and it's, like, ruining that in a way. Yeah. But so I feel like there needs to be more and you need to like explore those things that you touch on or yeah. just don't get into it. And it's scary because it's unknown. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's, I feel like the theatrical cuts sitting in that weird sort of like, yeah, it's like, too long, it tri- not long enough. Like it tried to have that theatrical cut, but it also tried to have like some hints at some of that sort of longer director cut content. It just, yeah, yeah the balance is just a little, little off. Yeah. I feel like it needed to be tighter or like considerably longer, but I'll still stand strong. Like with Florence Pugh, she's such a good actress. Yeah, she's great in it. 
fantastic in that. And there's some fucking great set pieces in that movie. Oh, totally. Like the thing with the, the cliff, design like, is awesome. Oof, yeah, and the, the cliff is great, great and like mm-hmm. Yeah. I was kind of tempted to get that 4K, but I didn't do it. It was expensive. Did you see that? Um the, like, A24 released the 4K. I heard something about it, but I I think yeah. I yeah, it was too expensive, right? It's like, like $45. I was like, yeah. I don't like it that much. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like for yeah. for a gamble rewatch on this director's cut, mm, no, I don't totally. Think so. Yeah, it's like, that's but it's weird. also like, why hasn't A two four released any other four Ks? Where's the first cow collector's edition four K? Okay, all right. Look, quick sidebar, a little bit uh, about four K stuff. Sure. I you know I want to get some of these like Criterion's that are coming out, but I just I'm Too saying hard? no How are you gonna because do it? I don't want to do uh, like the Irishman. It's I on four K on Netflix, dude. Yeah, I'm just gonna They're watch it on up. that. It's like yeah. I want to see the I, I I want the Irishman Criterion. That's amazing. Yeah, but I'm why would I get it other than just like to have like the extra content and stuff? Obviously, yeah. But like it feels. Why silly. would I watch a lower grader film like quality film version of it when I can literally just like turn on my TV and watch it right now in like a way higher quality? Yeah, but it doesn't like, make any sense. If it was UHD Criterion, day one pre order. Oh, I would have it already, and I would. I would have it right now. <laughs> but like, yeah, it feels silly. Like, I would love to get Roma too. I want to own Roma. Same. But That's like, another one. Uh, why am I pu- buying this Criterion to like watch special features, <clears throat> and then when I put on the movie, I'll just not watch it? You know what I mean? It's totally. Silly. I would. And, I would. I, I would literally just be buying it for that bonus content. That's it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. buying it to watch the movie on that. Why? When I. Yeah. Can, why? When I turn on my TV and I can watch it and like two times the quality on my TV. Yeah. It doesn't make any silly. sense. And especially now that like like I just got the Beastmaster on 4K from Vinegar Amazing. Syndrome. Amazing. That's great. I love that that exists, but like Vinegar Syndrome's putting out like Tammy and the T-Rex and Criterion can't get it together to put out the fucking Irish Right? Something that's already like ready to go in 4k is literally like, already made yeah just yeah. like because <laughs> these movies that they're getting from netflix to put out are like large format movies like roma and it's yes. like maybe like there's certain criterions like i got the ghost dog criterion because i nice. love ghost dog and it's like yeah i don't know if i need a ghost dog uhd i doubt there will ever be one you know what i right. mean but like that's different that's totally different you know, and I just, I am, I'm with you there. I think they're fucking up big. Not getting into they the are, big. they're missing out. It's like, I don't. Arrow's getting into it big time now. They're putting out, like, they're announcing them left and right. We got it's other fantastic. companies coming in. It's great, but I'm starting, uh, I'm starting to sweat on that crit business a little bit, you know? Come on. No, get like, get, get with the times. It's, it... Especially, yeah, you're literally behind at this point because now you're re- you're literally releasing brand new movies that are in a higher quality content at a lower. You're selling them at a lower quality. Yeah, totally. And that's that's literally what goes like in my opinion that goes against what Criterion what does, they're about. right? Yeah, they they are about like providing the highest quality version of the film. Like I want that. Yeah, the optimum format. Like right. if I am going to get a movie what editions are out there oh there's a criterion well that's the one i want probably (laughs) you know what i mean because it's going to be the best version but yeah they're like known for that but yeah they're like knowingly downscaling yeah and like and this one might be a rights issue because it was a big hit but like parasite i would love to have the parasite criterion please there's a uhd so I bought that because I'm like, well, I also want to watch it in 4K because yeah, man, why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? I'm a right. 4K hound. I'm starved for 4K content. Starved. I am, my <laughs> belly is rumbling. For rumbling. I'm hungry um, for this content. But yeah, so it's like I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of lame. Yeah, and, it sucks, man. Because it's also like I don't need every release that comes out to be a 4K. Obviously, that'd be fucking sick. But like, right? I don't need it. Like. You yeah, know. we're not like, a- we're not we're not asking you know yeah we're not asking Criterion to upscale everything to four K, but these movies that are already like they're already in yeah. that 
there's no work on your part to do that. You just got to get a, like a larger disc, you know, a, you know, better quality disc, which isn't like that much more expensive on their end. Yeah. So and it just... I'm also willing to pay more for it. Right. So I, I, I think it's silly that they haven't done it yet. I thought they would be one of the first companies to do it, but they're literally totally. like going to be the last ones. Like Kino, I got in the mail. I got the original Mad Max. Came out on UHD. Kino. Amazing. Got in the mail today. And it's just like, fuck yeah. This is great. So many more companies are getting into it, but I don't know. Criterion's yeah. slacking hard. They're like the only major one that hasn't done it yet. And you would think they'd be like the first. It's so yeah. strange. You know anyway. what it is? Fucking bogus. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got one more movie I can talk about. Um, I got one too. Um, who left off last? I think it was I, me. I think you, you, so did you go last. next. Yeah. You go next. I I guess one that I forgot about that I watched that I really enjoyed is The Taste of Tea, um, which is I think like early two thousands, directed by uh, Katsushito Ishii, which I hadn't seen any other of their films, but I've uh, heard of them, and. Yeah, I really loved uh, Taste of Tea. Which it's one? Kind of... the, the, I, I IMDb pulls up a lot of stuff. Uh, is it a short? No, it's a it's a feature. It's like two and a half hours. Hmm. Two thousand four looks like. Uh, two thousand four. It's kind of just like the story about a, a family who lives in Japan, and uh, kind of all these like surreal angles. Uh, all this sort of like goofy style humor um real sort of bizarre imagery uh also very funny but very heartwarming definitely teared up at the end and i don't know it was just kind of uh just just a delight really just a really nice movie that i liked a lot and it was really fucking weird but um managed to be super endearing at the same time uh, I love sort of like tangential sort of like offshoot stuff and there's a lot of really good stuff like that in it um, nice that just kind of like branches off and takes off on this like weird side story and then like reigns you back in um, but yeah I really liked it a lot it had been one I've been wanting to see for a really long time and um, it finally just got put out on blu-ray and uh, ordered up it, that um, on IMDB it comes up as Cha Noaji. Cha Noaji. Excuse my my pronunciation, but it <laughs> um Cha Noaji. Cha uh yeah, Cha Noaji. Um <laughs> it, it's the taste of tea. That's the but that's the title on um but the poster says it's the taste of tea. Yeah. 2004. Um yeah, it's on IMDb. So cool yep. uh, little Japanese film it looks like. It's a great movie and I definitely want to see I had seen like clips of especially funky forest um because he's definitely made some like real wacky shit um funky forest looks insane i still haven't seen that but um (laughs) this it was simultaneously more weird and less weird than i was expecting um the sort of like strange imagery is done like i was saying earlier in kind of like a weird endearing way uh and yeah i don't know it was great i really liked it I really like one. Japanese cinema. It's just yeah, one man. of my favorite fantastic regions stuff. of film. I love it. Mm-hmm. Gotta check it out. Um, cool. Well, last one I'll talk about. Another movie on Netflix. Um, it's gotten it's gotten some buzz. Both, well, it had some positive buzz ahead of time. I think now negative buzz. Uh, Hillbilly Elegy. Oh yeah. You would, okay, so first of all, directed by Ron Howard. Yeah. Stars Amy Adams, Glenn Close, you know, right there. And there's like some other stars into it, but those are the main ones, right? Um, producers Brian Glazer um, and uh, composer Hans Zimmer. Um, there's a lot of other people behind the camera and stuff that make this seem like this should be a fucking hit. Yeah. Um. It's not very good. Yeah, it it's looks not pretty baby. It's 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 like pure 
uh, like Academy Award Oscar clickbait. You know, like it's. Mm. It actually kind of surprised me in the beginning. I was like, oh, okay, I'm kind of digging this. The score is pretty decent, I gotta say. Yeah. Hans Zimmer, you know, does a good job to move it along. Um, the performances are good. Um, the cinematography is good. Um, but there's just no substance at all to the movie. Yeah. And uh, it. It's based on this book by this guy who's been like a real he's like a he's like a, a Republican's like dream story because he's mm. like this guy from middle of nowhere who you know he's picked up by the bootstraps and he takes himself to to Yale and he becomes this lawyer you know he comes from he's just like a redneck from nowhere and he bec- he's part of you know the the high society you know just mm. by pulling his shit together, you know. Just that's all you got to do. You got to work. You just got to work hard, and you'll make your dreams come true, right? And um, that really just sort of is like ugh, a slog, especially just like in twenty twenty, and just like seeing that it's just sort of with everything that's going on politically, it just doesn't jive. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, it just sort of you're just like you just roll your eyes. It's just so away from reality. Um, and aside from sort of that overarching element to it, um, the like scene to scene structure is just there's no like real substance to or arc to to the characters really. They just they just yell at each other. They yell at each other constantly. Scene to scene, yell scene. Next scene, yell. Oh, this family's terrible. Next scene, family's still yeah, terrible. Like... <laughs> but we love. But we love you. We're all still family. Um, next scene. Oh, you know, this is why you, you know you're just a hillbilly. Blah blah blah. Uh, it's just, it's so just like, ugh. Uh, like you want to you want to vomit. Um, so don't recommend watching it. Yeah. Um really disappointing because and i didn't like i didn't hear that it was that great but because of the team you know behind it mm-hmm. i love amy adams dude like yeah. glenn close uh and ron howard han zimmer like in this really nice looking cinematography i was like i'll give it a shot um and like i said i i started watching i was a very i enjoyed somewhat somewhat of the beginning and the editing's kind of nice Mm-hmm. But then it gets to this point in the middle, and you're like, "Oh, I see." Yeah, now. checking the runtime. You're, you're like, like "Okay, <laughs> I get it now. I know why there's negative criticism. This is oh, yeah. just when yeah, you know, I'm looking at the clock, and then it finally kind of <laughs> sputters at the end. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. Anyway, not worth your time. Yeah, heard some bad things. Was waiting to see, but I was like, not. It's like if this is if there's some hubbub, maybe I'll check this out. But it doesn't look like it's gonna be my bag. It's pretty baity looking. Two stars from me. Yeah. Oof. It's rough. Yeah. And like I said, yeah, it's just really trying to be like, hey, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you want to send me an Oscar? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like it's just, hey, Oscar season. And what's kind of sad is it might be nominated for shit because there's nothing else <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> yeah there's not um, a lot hopefully it's the year though that just like all the cool shit wins awards you know yeah but probably not <laughs> probably not. it's gonna be real interesting academy yeah. awards <laughs> yeah seriously fucking anyway. weird mate that's the last one for me yeah i don't really have anything else i watched jingle all the way last night it's pretty fun I guess. That's, hey, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watch. I try and watch it every year, man. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. Played right, well, Spyro through half. It was great. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you hear about the announcement for HBO yeah, Max? Yeah, the big HBO Max announcement. Yeah, so if anyone doesn't know, um, HBO Max and um, it's Warner Brothers, right? Yeah. More, they announced that the same basically like when their movies come out next year the same day they will also be like Warner Brothers films will also be on HBO Max 
the same day for up to a month. And that's, crazy. that's really crazy. That's that's huge. That's yeah, it's really big. That's really big. And th- and what that includes, like we're talking well, well, Wonder Woman we already knew, but um Dune yeah. and Matrix um, Four. Matrix Four and uh there's a couple other big ones I can't name off yeah. the top of my head. But yeah, Warner Brothers, you know, it's fucking Warner Brothers, so they have yeah. quite a slate for oh, yeah. next year. We're talking major releases also on HBO Max the same day. That's insane. And not only to mention, not just on HBO Max, it's in UHD HDR quality. It's in 4K. Yeah. What am I going to be doing when those movies come out? Yeah. I, I'm going to be watching them at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't know and, how successful this model will be, but I'll try it for sure because I'm going to watch that shit. Absolutely. I think it's a smart business model, but there is a there is a part of me that it's a little it's a little sad because I feel like it's another nail in the coffin of the theaters dying. Yeah. Know? There's a But maybe that's just the way it's going to be. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like theaters were having trouble before all this and there's just They like, totally were. There's no way to make theaters make sense right now because it's literally right. just like gathering around to like watch something that you literally can just watch at home like there's no difference right. aside from scale so like scale. and obviously it's like you like seeing a movie with a crowd like obviously but like yeah the, you the can't product, really do that right now you're getting the same exact product because it's pre-recorded so like right. why would you go so i definitely think it's smart because like what are you just gonna hoard all this content for years like is james bond gonna come out in two years you know what i mean it's like no no because these these theaters or, or the studios are just, you know, there's, like, nothing to do. Because if you're not going to release a movie, then what? You're just, like, you can't really Why make you, movies either. You can't you make know? movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just going like, to keep making them and hoarding them. That's weird. So it makes total sense, and I understand that. But it's also, like, what they should have been doing. Like, Tenet should have come out $20 rental immediately, and I don't know why it didn't. You know what I mean? It's well, just, you uh, know, Chris, you know, Chris, yeah. Nolan, he wants that theater experience, but it's just like, what, uh, like James Bond. Come on, dude. James Bond. It'll yeah. come out. No time to die. And like what now we're not getting Dune. Like, but at least we will. At least. I mean, I guess we're going to get on HBO yeah, Max, but which unpostponed is unpostponed Dune now because it's the same shit. It's not going to be any better next year in May. Right. Is it May that it comes out? I don't know. Probably. But yeah, you're right. It's not going to be. Like, gonna I'm not going to be regularly going to the movies next year in May. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. So, just fucking drop Dune tomorrow. Surprise drop, dude. Oh, my God. That would make my fucking weekend. <laughs> yeah. <that'd be laughs> dude. It would make oh, more than... Man. It'd make my month, probably. <laughs> oh, it'd be amazing. Anything, um, anything right now would just be I, terrible. <laughs> please, <laughs> you know? just drop something. Oh, my God. Um, hey, at least we're getting... Wonder Woman 1984 <laughs> Christmas Day. Yeah. I still haven't seen the first Wonder Woman. <laughs> um, no, yeah, you should check it out. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I'll probably I'll probably watch 1984 too. You know, honestly, it's like it's my favorite of the DC movies, man. Nice. Yeah, you should check it out. But it's still a DC superhero movie, so yeah, take yeah, that with a grain sure. of salt. But it's still yeah, fun. Yeah. Nice. I don't know. I'm looking forward to the new one. At least it's something. Like I said. Yeah. You know. And it's also, for content. Yeah, absolutely start for content. There's fucking nothing. I do think it's interesting that they're releasing it. Do you think there's gonna be any hidden like like it comes out on HBO Max, but it's gonna be like they like Disney did with Mulan, where it's like we're releasing Mulan on Disney Plus and then everyone goes on to watch it and it's like pay twenty extra dollars to watch Mulan. And everyone was like, Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like I already pay for this service, but do you think they'll totally. do that? I hope not. I think it was a failed model. Because um, I, I don't know if they specified if it's free to subscribers or not. I think that, like, they just, the way the article described it was, like, if you have HBO Max, you can watch these movies. That's what I assumed. But Yeah. The cynic in me is, like, would they just charge? But also. I don't know. They didn't mention I, that. I paid $20 to watch Dune. The only reason that too. the $20 model didn't work is because people only release shit movies. 
if Tenant Day One came out twenty dollars, I would absolutely rent it for twenty dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I pay for me and my girlfriend to go see it, it's more than twenty dollars, and we'll both watch right. it at home. Like exactly. So I don't. That's see sort of the concept behind it. But like, yeah, I think the 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 problem was like Mulan. Like you're already paying for Disney Plus. Yeah. Like another... So like, why am I paying for this other thing on top of it? When you know, and here's the funny thing, you know it's going to come out on Disney Plus later. And guess what? Yeah. I when I when I put on Disney Plus like yesterday, guess what free? was on there for free? Yeah, Mulan. Mulan. And you watched it immediately, right? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. that's that's so stupid. It's yeah, it's a dumb model, but like, I do think it's. I mean, I'm for it. I don't want to. I, I would love to watch Dune essentially for free based on what i'm paying now you know what i mean it's like you're still paying for hbo but like i already was so fuck yeah i'm down but i just think it's weird that i don't know they didn't i don't think any studio took a chance on the like vod thing that i'm worried that then if this fails it's just like what do you do now just force everyone to you know what i mean it's weird yeah, it's weird. I mean, I think they everyone's just sort of holding off, hoping they're just like sort of hoping that this virus would be over, and it's not, yeah. guys. So mm-hmm. you got to release your shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so weird. What a weird time, dude. Yeah, what a man. weird fucking time. Fucking sucks. Um, but fucking speaking of Disney shy. Plus, another another sidebar, another rant. Mm-hmm. Have you been watching Mandalorian? No. Oh my god. I know I gotta watch it. I don't know why. I just haven't done it. Okay, I mean, so I, you know, there was the first season, and time has passed. And but when I put on that first episode of season two, mm. I was like, yeah, Mandalorian, hell yeah, so you know. But when I watched that f- first one, I was like, dude, f- this show is fucking good. This show is nice. good. It's doing stuff. It's way better than the movies, like yeah. that are coming out. Like it's way better than the like, and the the budget is upped, the the technology that they're using, which I, for any listeners, since I'm talking about, it, I also want to point out that if you have Disney Plus, you should check out, and if you've seen season one of Mandalorian, you should watch the um, Disney Plus gallery behind the scenes um, documentary show mm. about the Mandalorian. Um, really fantastic behind the scenes content like if this is like the kind of real good shit you want to have if you get like a blu-ray of mm. of something so like if i were to get a blu-ray of mandalorian this is the content that i want to see like the real behind the scenes nitty-gritty stuff which you just don't get anymore especially from disney yeah. or star wars movies mm-hmm. but the stuff that they're doing on the show is so unique and new and because they have the budget it's Disney of the technology that they're doing. They're, they're pushing this crazy tech on the show. And it really blew my mind the other day about they're, they're doing video walls for like everything that looks exterior, like 90% mm-hmm. of stuff that's shot is in, t- it's all inside. It's all on yeah. a sound stage. Mm-hmm. There are, there are shots in the first season of him, like in a desert at sunset. Yeah. That's not a green screen either. That's a literal video wall. And what they do is they have the camera and it parallaxes the background. They're using a video game engine to yeah. literally, and you can see like, because there's a wider screenshot, you know, from the documentary mm-hmm. camera of like the whole video wall. And you can see that when the camera moves the lens, the frame around the actors is also moving but it's also adjusting the parallaxing of everything around them, like on the yeah, outskirts. Yeah, that's fucking insane. <laughs> like that. It's fucking so insane. crazy, dude. Uh, and you, you, dude, you gotta watch the behind-the-scenes yeah. stuff, especially when it comes that. to technology. It's really yeah. fascinating. And so, anyway, so like, like when they're next to a ship, that's mm. you know, you see the ship, but it's cut off at the ceiling. But mm. that ceiling is also video wall. So you're literally getting a virtual environment that's like kind of in a virtual reality game engine that changes based on the perspective of the camera to mm-hmm. look – it looks real. It literally looks fucking real. Yeah, because real. you're you're using 
similar tech that you would use to animate in a green screen, but you're just making it like a practical effect by shooting it like in camera. Yeah, and it's like which LED is honestly cam- really cool. It's an LED. It's an LED um, monitor. Yeah, you know, it's an LED yeah. video wall with like thousands of LED lights. That's crazy. That surround everything. So they're like in a little capsule room. Mm -hmm. When you step into it and the camera like steps into this like kind of capsule wall into this like sound stage, you're instantly teleported. The actors are teleported. You as the viewer are teleported. You literally look like you're in the fucking desert. Like you walked into a desert. That's crazy. I had no idea. It's really, they're doing really groundbreaking shit. Um, so anyway, I found that really, really fascinating. And knowing that now and seeing the new season and like what they're doing, like with all the different voices and directors are coming in to do it. Yeah, and didn't Robert Rodriguez do an episode? He just did, did the latest one. Yeah, that's crazy. Bryce Dallas Howard, um, um, uh, Taika Waititi. Um, and they're getting all these different people to do it. Not in John Favreau, obviously, but... Um, I don't know, man. It's really cool. I'm like loving it. I'm loving the hell out of the show right now. Nice. Hell yeah. I need to watch so it. I think, yeah, you got to catch up, dude. It's so good. Should I watch the doc before I watch the new season? Yeah, why not? Because the doc is just about season one. So if you've seen yeah. season one, mm. it's just that. So there's nothing to spoil about season two at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I rec- I mean, yeah, watch the especially when i think it's like episode four on the documentary series mm. it talks about, it's it's called technology and then it also goes into the practicals so there's like all these crazy practical effects are doing the technology blew my mind because i had no idea like i really thought that stuff was like green screened ish but i mm. really thought that they were really in like real locations for most stuff yeah and that is not true it is all inside yeah that's wild to me because it looks great it looks fantastic yeah yeah that's cool and to have that sort of um flexibility to like have i we know today we're shooting this scene at at magic hour you know sunset or Mm -hmm. sunrise and to like not have that change and then you're really and what's really cool too because obviously his helmet so you get all those real life light reflections to yeah when you get the the green yeah the armor you're getting the light reflections and Mm -hmm. um you're seeing like light pass and shadows that are really there that wouldn't be there if there was green screen and oh dude totally. it's it's so fucking cool um what it's they're doing wild. i had no so. idea yeah so check it out man i mean definitely watch season two but that documentary blew me away hell yeah maybe uh once i get done with uh berlin alexander Platz, that'll be my am <laughs> there my you go am show you know yeah it's a good morning watch for sure yeah and you just watch pop in one episode at a time, you know, mm-hmm. only 30 minutes. Yeah. Or maybe just Cass hasn't seen, my girlfriend hasn't seen the first season. So I either need to like bring her up to speed or like sneak them in. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. All right. So moving on, let's, let's get to the, let's get to the movie. Yeah, let's make it up. <laughs> let's make it out. Um, you want to make out? Yeah, um, <laughs> all right uh, at this point um that's that's going to conclude what we've been watching let's get into our non-spoiler review of mank starting now mank it's awesome Wells. of course it is i think it's time we talk what is it the writer says tell the story you know Hello, everyone. Make yourself to home, Mr. Mankowitz, or shall I call you Herman? Please, call me Mank. 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 This is Herman Mankowitz, but we're to call him Mank. Mankowitz. Herman Mankowitz. New York playwright and drama critic. Turned humble screenwriter, Mr. Hurst. This is a business where the buyer gets nothing for his money but a memory. What he bought still belongs to the man who sold it. That's the real magic of the movies. Thunder, lightning, blood, fire, religion. Help! Someone save me! All in one film. That's director proof. That's why I always want Mank around. So, um, 1930s Hollywood 
is reevaluated through the eyes of scathing social critic and alcoholic screenwriter Herman J. Mankiewicz as he races to finish the screenplay of Citizen Kane. That's a description from Letterboxd, actually. Oh, shit. Um, changing it up. <laughs> Probably the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 2020 movie just came out on Netflix. You can watch it now. It's directed by David Fincher, his first film in a while. Yeah, since Gone Girl, right? I think so. That was, what, was 2016? 2017? M- might be 2015. I think so. A while. Yeah. Anyway, it stars Gary Oldman, Amanda Seyfried, yep. uh, Lily Collins, and a bunch of um, little appearances from other actors that I haven't recognized. Yeah. But, Zach, what do you think of Mank? We both saw this movie today. Yeah, you, you watched your you watched it today. I watched it this morning. Yeah, I did as well. Um, I gotta say, wasn't a huge fan of Mank, honestly. Um, hmm. Yeah, I. I don't know. Maybe I didn't fully understand what it was trying to say. Maybe things were, uh, not fully absorbed. But I kind of just didn't really get why I cared. If that makes yeah. sense. Um, it just wasn't super engrossing to me. I honestly thought it was kind of boring, personally. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was, um, yeah, it's just not, uh, nothing kind of, there was nothing kind of engrossing about it, really. It just sort of, it's, it's very, it's sort of a dull movie. To me, it wasn't like, it wasn't bad. I don't think it was Mm -hmm. a bad movie. It just sort of was like, why why do i care sort of yeah thing. like why do absolutely I, why, like, why do i am care I about this? this why do i care about this story um why why should i even care for the main character um yeah i mean it was kind of neat in some elements like if you know anything about mank you know it's in black and white and um it does have some sort of callbacks to that era 1930s era like i thought the um like the cigarette burns and some of the like filmic qualities are kind of neat. Um, but, and, and it definitely has an older kind of editing style and, mm. and, and, and pacing and setup for, for stuff. And, and the look, obviously I thought some of the lighting was pretty cool. Um, but like the story was just, I, I don't understand why I, would be interested in this it was yeah just sort of dull um and and i always hate to kind of say that too about black and white movies because a lot of people are like oh it's black and white it's gonna be boring that's not necessarily true i don't know i've watched a lot more black and white movies that were enthralling compared to this i oh totally i was checking the runtime a lot i was like done with this honestly before it It felt very long it felt very long. long it was like i i I don't know. I'm not super interested in like golden era Hollywood stuff. Like obviously mm. I like old movies, but I've never been like, man, to live in the thirties in Hollywood. You know what I mean? It's just like not my thing. Hmm. So maybe that is a big factor for people, but sure. it seemed to me like it was kind of similar to like a once upon a time in Hollywood in the um, somewhat like masturbatory nature of like the motivation of why you made this movie. Mm. And I think that while I wasn't like the biggest fan of that movie, I think it kind of justified its existence more than this did. And once again, they're like very different. You don't need to compare them, but just to try to say like, I, I think the main appeal of this is if you like golden era Hollywood it looks like one of those and it's just like oh cool there's old cars and like the buildings are cool that they're in (laughs) and like that was kind of like the most value i got out of it i think everything and once again i don't know i was kind of in a bad mood when i watched it so maybe that had something to do with it but i i really don't understand what it said or brought to the table that hadn't been said a bunch before it just was like nothing new kind of yeah to me 
No, I I, I agree. It's sort of um, sort of the tropes have been done many times before. I thought I thought it was kind of interesting to see sort of just like what a strange different era the 1930s were like this the studios were such a big industry it was like and it was such a different sort of time i i'm not like one for those types of things but i do find yeah. it kind of fascinating in some way just like mm. how different things were and how it was such a business and it still is but like yeah. it, i don't know it's just different um and like it was sort of still in that era of like old society with with yeah. film sort of interesting but other than that you don't really get much else and you, you sort of get the same stuff you've seen before of you know the sort of uh washed up uh, uh yeah. alcoholic writer we've seen that thousands of times yeah i'm, I'm really tired of that honestly I'm just like yeah not what i need <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah Cause I, I think I, that or no i finish. think that the perf- I, I think the performances i think the performances were good um yeah. I think everything was like it's fine, but it just was not that enthralling or interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like a waste of potential to me. Like mm. everyone, all these talented people worked on this movie that's just kind of like boring and has yeah nothing new to say. It's like a movie about you know almost a hundred years ago that has nothing new to say except for like, wow, look at the parallels to now. It's like, I thought yeah. it did have it did draw some parallels to to modern times. Yeah, but, but nothing that I don't know already. Right. You know what I mean? It was like Yeah, that's true. Wow, pow- there's power and corruption in media. It's like for sure. It's like <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, "Oh, wow, people in media actually influence things and, you know, voices are suppressed on the other side." It's like, "Yeah, for sure." You know and what I mean? A lot of, and that brought in the whole politics angle from Yeah, the time. and like I think there's something interesting about that. And I was kind of waiting for the movie to like get going for a long portion. Like I looked at, I was like, I'm an hour into this movie and I don't know why I'm watching it. You know what I mean? Like what's bring, and then it kind of gets into the political stuff and I feel like it's starting to do something, but it doesn't. And I mean, once again, I'm saying, I don't know, maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't fully understand what it was trying to do, but I didn't think it really got into anything that, isn't like apparent yeah that just like yeah there's propaganda in media and the people that make media are just as bad as a politician and they are a lot of the times and like i get that they're like trying to subvert um or not subvert but like they're telling a story of someone who's trying to like subvert the system and he's your close charles dance is um fuck what's the newspaper man's name uh, that he plays in the movie, the beers are getting to me. Charles Dance's character, uh, Norman something. I don't know. I don't know. William Randolph Hearst. And, oh yeah, um, Hearst. Hearst. Yeah. yeah, and like the movie is like, yeah, there's Gary Oldman and he's writing this movie, and it's kind of like this big dig at the sky, and it's about a newspaper man, and like Citizen Kane's about all his shit, and like okay, but while it's always not fair to compare movies to other movies that they're like associated with like why are you going toe to toe with citizen kane here because the the whole movie i feel like to get like his arc you need to have seen that it's all dependent on citizen kane like it's It's a very good point like it's a very good point it sort of assumes that you've seen the movie yeah because otherwise like the whole his whole narrative is undercut if you don't know that citizen kane is about that and is like basically like about Charles right. Dance's character, then like what why is he redeemable at all? He's just a fucking drunk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just totally. he's just like a witty dick. You know what I mean? and like I don't know. I I didn't really get it because hmm. it's like who's this movie for? People who love Citizen Kane and they just wanna like watch a guy talk about Citizen Kane. It's like I just I just rather watch like an essay or like a documentary on this writer. You know what I mean? I just don't, like, I don't need to see him just, like, get drunk and, like, skate by relationships. And everyone's like, you know what? You're a terrible guy, but also you're a damn good writer, Mank. You know what I mean? Like, oh, get him the booze because he needs the sauce to write something good. 
And then, I don't know. I don't but we've know. seen that so many times. It's... Yeah. And it's just, like, weird and enabling. Just felt, like, not great. I don't know. Hmm. I just didn't really get it. I, get, I understand where you're coming from there. Aside from all that, just trying to show a different perspective. Because I agree with everything you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I do want to just sort of point out non spoilers. Like, I do think that some of the setting was very interesting. Like, having it... Um, sort of place in that time i thought it was very accurate i thought the scene the just where you get that f- you get that full old la feeling yeah from totally the movie. Mm-hmm. um yeah and i think i had another point but i think that i basically just wanted to say that i was just like there you do get that you get that element but aside from that you're not getting anything so, and again it's not it's something we've seen before yeah. you know it's nothing new and um cool orson wells is in the movie but like we've seen that even before yeah so it's and even like, when he does it's like kind of winky like all the yeah. references to citizen kane are like so winky and like in but it's like the most broad in because it's like the most famous movie ever so it's like right oh cool you also like this movie that is the best apparently <laughs> you know what i mean i don't yeah. know it's like it just and, felt and, too yeah. niche in a way well, let's 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 move into spoilers. So yeah. We talk about a little more details. All right, we're moving into spoilers for Mank starting right now. Before you get into our spoiler segment, I'd like to interject to discuss that special deal from our sponsor again. For the listeners of the Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast. Audible is offering a free audio book download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N for your free audio book. Who do you think you are? You're nothing but a court jester. What I want to know is why you think of it. It's a bit of a jumble, the collection of fragments that leap around in time like Mexican jumping beans. Welcome to my mind, old sock. Him, I get. But what did Marion ever do to deserve it's this? It's not her. Not all characters are headliners. Some are secondary. You pick a fight with Willie. You are finished. Mayor can't save you. Nobody can. Especially the boy genius from New York. I removed any distraction, eliminated every excuse. Your family, your cronies, liquor. I gave you a second chance. You cannot capture a man's entire life in two hours. All you can hope is to leave the impression of one. Why Hurst? Outside his own blonde Betty Boop, you're always his favorite dinner partner. Are you familiar with the parable of the organ grinder's monkey? <laughs> so, spoilers for Mank. Spoilers for Mank. Um, I guess I this isn't technically a spoiler thing, but echoing back to what we were talking about earlier with the lighthouse is i i think probably the best thing about this movie is that it looks really good like it just yeah. looks really nice but the lighting's also, awesome yeah the lighting especially is very good the lighting is great but i also just like don't really like the way it looks because personally i'm not super into the like the fake like uh like grain and hair stuff like grain's one thing to add texture but like the cigarette burns and stuff is kind of like eh like I don't need that. I feel like the audio was also intentionally it was like mixed to it sound old. Off. And it's it just kind of like why are you adding fake noise to this like crisp digital audio? Like you have and yeah. I don't know because it's sort not, of a gimmick. Because it's, it's gimmicky. It's, it feels cheap because they're not the style But it's also is trying to this. But it's also trying to mimic the era. And, like, that's how it was with, like, the titles and everything. Yeah, it's the same and thing. I think t- titles are one thing, though. But I don't think the cinematography mimicked the era. I think the cinematography felt like a David Fincher movie. Which is fine. 
Like, and I don't mind aspects. it being black and white. There's like the occasional shot that's cool, and like the I one feel like sequence. There was, I feel like like I, but I feel like a lot of the sequences were like, especially where we're like sort of speaking. Sorry, I didn't ruin. Um, a lot of the sequences were shot like like old Hollywood like some of the the some of the stuff that was like in the cabin where he was like writing um mm. was shot old Hollywood style I remember one in particular where it was like in the when he first gets to like that house to start writing or whatever and he's in the bed and there's like a wide shot that like it, but it goes like the whole scene plays out in this wide shot and that mm. sort of that sort of felt very much like old Hollywood yeah um I just feel like to me the the like we were talking about earlier i think the lighthouse struck the perfect balance with that because it felt new it recalled an old aesthetic it's a four by three it's like grainy film but it also like took that aesthetic and updated it and like used the technology that they have to like move the camera in ways that you couldn't then but there's still like the authenticity there so you're still like advancing on it but you're also like indulging in it a little bit but to me yeah. this this didn't really feel that way it kind of just to me felt like a david fincher movie that they like threw grain on and were like look it looks old now and like i i don't mind the black and white i don't mind the lighting was great and I think you can evoke that time with, like, still being your own. But I think adding the sort of, like, fake, like, like audio noise and, like, stuff, it just kind of feels phony. It just made it feel kind of phony to me. And I felt like a lot of the times I just felt like it was people in costumes. And it just kind of, like, I didn't, hmm. it didn't suspend my disbelief enough. It kind of just felt like, look at all these people playing 30s. You know what I mean? Huh, I didn't get that, but yeah, interesting. Once again, I was in a bad mood. Maybe I was just in too bad of a mood when I watched this. <laughs> Maybe. But I was just I, like, I just didn't really find much interesting about it at all, personally. Huh. No, I, I agree that like the plot and everything wasn't interesting, but I thought I thought, I thought it did an overall decent job. I do think that it was, it was a little more dull grays in some of the composition than I mm-hmm. wanted. Yeah. There were some shots like that had like great, yeah. There's some shots that had great contrast, great lighting. Mm-hmm. There was like one shot in particular where it was like, uh, Gary Oldman's character was like a silhouette, but then the person he was facing was kind of lit dimly, and then there was mm-hmm. sort of like a backlight, and it looked fucking great. Um, but then there's other shots where it was like some of the like where they're like a night scene. It looked very much just like a low grade, like grainy sort of you need more light in this scene yeah sort of look and it's like that that just did look that looked poor compared to the other stuff mm-hmm. so it was sort of not consistent in that respect yeah. um i guess this is not also another non not really a spoiler but something i kind of wanted to point out earlier was i thought the i thought the pacing felt very much like a david fincher movie too um sort of like the tempo of the movie i sort of was mm. like li- watching it and i was like yeah this feels like a venture movie sort of like how it moved and the way people talked so i do like that aspect but again i feel like i'm talking maybe a little more positively but that doesn't mean that i necessarily really enjoyed the movie i thought i mean it's fine if you did too but i i i'll i'll never watch it again <laughs> yeah i've like already like forgotten about it i i finished it like three hours ago or four yeah. hours ago, and I'm like already bored. I was bored of it. And and, I was bored too, and it sucks because like I was ready for it to be over long before it was yeah, over. <laughs> it just kind of doesn't amount to anything really, to me. And uh, I don't know. I think when when the stylistic aspect of the movie is like the best aspect, but it's still like conceptually problematic to me. I just like don't know. Like, Stoderberg did that movie, The Good German. I feel like that's the way you gotta do it. Like, you use the old cameras. If you really want to do something that's, like, evoking the time, like, use the tech of the time. But, yeah, like, I... David Fincher gotta do a thousand takes of everything. So it's like, and he of loves he's his digital that, shit. You know? Right. But, like, just own your style. Like, it felt too in between. It wasn't committed enough to looking like an old movie. 
and it yeah. was too it was too slick and like i don't mind it looking slick but just like make but it go that way feel modern who cares yeah. go that I, way and he makes great looking modern films like yeah his modern exactly films look so good like, like he, and so it's a different tell, it's a it, it's an interesting step for him to do to do that honestly yeah maybe but, like, he just like tell that they like added like film warble where the like the screen isn't still mm. and, like it's just i feel like the whole movie just felt kind of phony and like i didn't really get what uh like why like why like, <laughs> yeah why? like why, why do we care uh, why <laughs> why do we care why yeah. do we care because it doesn't necessarily get at anything bigger to me aside from paralleling things. Like, there's nothing that I haven't seen in another movie that I think is unique to this aside from, like, drawing those comparisons. But those comparisons are evident. It's like, if you don't know that there's, like, corruption and pow- power is the most important thing in the media, then, like, wow you don't know that <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. like oh like like rich have you ever watched control? a movie before yeah exactly oh rich people control money and media wow you know i don't know maybe that's boiling it, everything down too much but it does and now that we're in spoilers it does try to i thought it did definitely try and tie it to modern times with the whole like republican democrat oh, sort yeah. of dynamic the, like upton sinclair yeah and having thing. that having that whole election play a big part in the different people who were involved with that. And then talking about the difference between communism and, and, and socialism was a big thing that was very much. Yeah. Was, obviously present. Yeah. But it's but, like, but also again, it didn't, it didn't lend much to it other than like pointing those things out. Yeah. It's like, Oh, did, did I not know that like the powers that be like the rich, men in power don't want bernie sanders to be president you know what i mean oh yeah. would people like actively fight against that oh i had no idea you know what i right. mean it's just like almost too relevant in a way where it's like yeah duh dude like kind of like yeah kind of like when uh jim jarmusch made dead don't die and it was Ugh. just like you're like a zombie on your cell phone and everyone's like oh yeah totally for like like eight years now you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you talking yeah. about, dude? Like, everyone knows. I felt <laughs> I felt kind of similar to that, where it was just, like, it felt like a guy uh, who had, like, power in film to, like, make whatever he wanted, and he just, like, decided to play with toys, and, like, that's fine, but it's not as fun to watch someone play with toys. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, like, like, I, and it's undoubtedly, like, looks really good. Like, I, I think period stuff is cool. Like, all the sets cool. are great like some of the shots in it are awesome like i loved all the walking down the hallways when they were like in yeah. the formation the and tracking could, shots are great yeah like all that shit's cool and like the sets are great but it just kind of felt like a flex in a weird way where it's just like i don't really get why you made this i guess it's his dad's screenplay or something right isn't that a thing it was made by Fincher, but I wasn't sure if that... I didn't know the relation. I thought maybe it was his brother, but I knew it's a Fincher. Yeah, script. I thought I heard it was his dad who's been, who's passed away. So okay. if that's the case, it's like I get why you would feel compelled to make this. But I mean, I thought the def- language... I thought the language was like, you know, it was well-written and stuff. Like, I, I, I thought the the way like yeah the dialogue was written was very snappy very witty and that that yeah. lent itself to the character that like gary oldman played him well um and like a lot just, of those it scenes... didn't yeah sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say in a lot of those scenes especially the scene on the like studio head on the guy who owns mgm or whatever like the studio yeah. head guy when it's his birthday yeah. and they're all yeah. hanging out in that room that's right. a very impressive scene that like i that think a, yeah. could could like someone could watch and just skate over like how insanely hard it would be to like block out that dialogue oh, scene dude. the and, blocking like, totally the way that they're cutting between all those conversations of everyone and sitting on all these different places and like they're in this huge hall and there's like 50 extras and like that scene was it's there's parts that are impressive like dude that's impressive directing right there. yeah exactly and it like doesn't yeah. feel that way and it's not like calling out it's not showy 
in that moment. So there are things that, like, yeah, yeah, that, like, take skill and, like, are good. Like, I didn't think it was trash, but it's just, I guess it's, like, more upsetting that it's just, like, there's so much talent that's working there that it's just, like, really boring, and I never intend on watching it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, Especially since it's Fincher, one of my favorite yeah. directors, and, and it's like, like this is what he comes like back with? Five, six years, and he just makes yeah. this. Like, dude, just it's make like, Mindhunter uh, Season 3, man. I much would have much rather watched Mindhunter Season 3 than this Dude, movie. yes. And apparently and, they're not going to make any more. Yeah, and it's just done. And, like, who am I to Which tell sucks. a fucking artist what they should make? But it's just, like, <laughs> right. I don't know. It's just unfortunate. It's one of those things where, like, I heard what they were doing. And once again, similar to Dead Don't Die... Where, like, yeah. it's their next project announced, and I was like, ugh, damn, okay, well, yeah. I guess I'll watch it. Like, I'm excited to see them, but I don't really care about this, but, like, I'll watch it, you know, and then it's like, I hope it's good, and they, like, subvert it and do something interesting. And it's like, yeah. oh, no, it's just exactly what you would expect out of this. Ugh. Um, Yeah, after a Jim Jarmusch movie, you're like... I wanted that to be so much better. <laughs> yeah, that one was a big bummer. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I think it's also, like I was saying earlier, it's like, it's not fair to compare movies all the time, but this movie's like begging to get compared to Citizen Kane. And like, why would you ever do that to yourself? It's like, I, yeah. get, I get that like everyone well, I don't loves think Citizen it's, Kane. It's comparing in the sense that it's trying to be almost like a companion piece. Like it has to be. Yeah, but like you, but why if would you've you never do that? seen his right? Why Isn't would like, you like you love space? Would you ever and you you're a filmmaker? Would you ever make a companion piece to two thousand one? Absolutely not ever. Because yeah, is it going to be as good? No, and that's no offense yeah. to you, but it's just not going to be. Like, why of would course. you do it? Like, of course, yeah, yeah, you know. Totally. And it's just like, yeah, well, this is its own movie, and it's like, okay, sure, but. It's also I don't think like, it's I don't think it's trying to like be on par with Citizen Kane. Though. I don't think it's trying to be on par, but I think it's constantly reminding me that it's attached to it, and I don't get why. Like it is because well, it's about the writer of of this movie, right? But well, that it's but, it's but it's written in a way to where it's like it's comparing back to it. So many that's the problem. It's like yeah, that's fine. So many, like, but like it's comparing it to in referencing this movie like you literally have to have seen i mean i know sure it's like supposedly the greatest film of all time hopefully you've seen this and especially if you're gonna watch mank about the writer of this movie hopefully you've seen it yeah you probably have seen it but but it's sort of relying a lot on that too i don't think you would i i mean i've seen both and i didn't really get much out of it but i think you would get zero out of it if you hadn't seen citizen kane oh i agree and like well, I don't know. Maybe that's not an issue. I do think if you're making a companion piece to something, like they specifically call out in the movie when he's writing it, they're like, "Man, I don't know. It's all jumbled up. Like it doesn't take place at the same time. Like yeah, it's all over you know? the place." And it's like, "Oh wow, non-linear storytelling. It's not a huge thing. Wow, you know." And yeah, but like, why would you do that if you're making this? Like you're echoing that, but so. So in that way, it's like, I get that it's about the writer, so clearly you're tied to it. But I think you could also make something that, like, has its own voice that is tied to that. You know what I mean? But this didn't really. It kind of just, I don't know. I I thought it was pretty unsuccessful in its structure. And um, this is this is my major... Or not my major nitpick, but my most annoying, minute nitpick with the movie. That Mm -hmm. when it goes to flashbacks or changes time, there's the typewriter. Mm -hmm. Out on that. The typewriter, and then it goes down. Why wouldn't it go up? I thought that too. I was like, why does it go... It goes down and off the screen. But if you're using a typewriter, it goes up. I don't know. I thought right. that was I thought that was dumb as hell. I was like it's stupid <laughs> as fuck. Like it's just like a t- very minute thing. That's just like I don't know. I get that though. I like, get that. Why would I mean cuz it like did you it's think also, about that at all or did you just go okay, sure. <laughs> you know like, cuz it's a subtitle right or it sort of, you know it's sort of meant to be like lower in the screen. Yeah. So it goes down to go off the screen cuz it's Why would you to the just bottom. type it out on the bottom and then it goes up off the screen? 
Yeah, I know. That's that the editor right honestly there. Honestly, <laughs> annoyed the fuck out of me every time it came on. I was like, oh. <sighs> and there's like the parentheses flashback. I don't know. It was a little too cutesy for me. I was like, this is, mm, I don't know. I don't like that. You're out. You're out on it. You're out, out on Mank. I'm out on Mank. <laughs> uh, big disappointment, too, because I was like, David Fincher. Yeah, fine, I was you know, excited. Again, we're star for content 2020. Yeah. Sweet. You know. Um, all right. Well, like, what do you. It, well, one, can I say one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think overall, it's not a glossy, um, positive portrayal of Hollywood, right? It's not like you're looking back on the 30s with all this reverence where it's like, oh, old Hollywood. Oh, I, yes. I was born in the wrong era, you know? The golden age. Of, yeah. Yes. And it's not that, but it also kind of is in a way. Like, it, it's presenting it it's negatively presenting it. from a cynical viewpoint, but like visually glossy. And yeah. I think that it could have gone harder in its stance. Because it felt like it was kind of just like throwing stuff at you and then being like, draw the connections. But I, it felt very like it wasn't, it just didn't feel like it was like saying anything. And I think the way that I would have liked this movie is if it took, it was more aggressive in its stance. You know what I mm. mean? Because it is kind of like. Well, that would have added more like, I don't know, interest to yeah. it too. Because it's just kind of like about something we've seen before in an era we've seen before and it doesn't really do anything new with its ideas um, except for that being like super cynical about everything and it's like he is cynical but I don't necessarily know if like the viewpoint of the movie is. I feel like it tried to do something with the politics, but it didn't quite land. Like you could literally cut out everything about the election that happens yeah. Yeah. and it would be the same movie. Pretty much. It doesn't like, take enough time for it at all. And I think, like, okay. I, the only thing you got out of that was like, Oh, he'll gamble on anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just think and it, some, for some reason, his wife still tolerates him. And honestly, the wife character annoyed me, and the it, me the too. stenographer character, just and honestly, I didn't think he was that developed of a character. I just didn't really like think I knew anyone that well in the movie. Like the yeah, no one was fleshed out really. I mean, the guy who played Orson Welles did a great impersonation of his voice, but like yeah, I don't know. It just felt really hollow to me. And like, if the point is that Hollywood is vapid and hollow. Yeah, I knew that already, and like right. y- you didn't make that the point. It just was that. So like that wasn't the point. It? Yeah, no, it totally wasn't the point. Yeah, <laughs> it just happened to be that. Um, all right. Well, what do you rate it, man? I give it like two and a half. I, I figure you might it. go that way. I'm going three. Yeah, and like I don't think it's also like I don't think it was like bad. It's not like I'm like fuck that movie. It was so bad. Yeah, I don't think it was. I don't. Think it, was it was more bad. just like offensive, and it's like, man, this just like isn't much. You know what I mean? And it's like almost hurts more. You know what and I it, mean? Oh, it's totally. Like, and it and it drags on too. Yeah. You're just like, oh my god. Um, I will say one thing we didn't mention is the brief moments of the score being not just like swing music are fucking awesome. Yeah. I like, like there, that there are moments where there's like a weird like industrial like and obviously it's Trent it's Trent and Atticus right that did right that. so they got so that like, of course which like, I thought was when I saw them in the titles by the way I was like oh hell yeah I was yeah, like looking totally. forward to it you know mm-hmm. and like for the most part it kind of just like plays on and it's just like era sort of stuff but every now and again there's just like ooh this banger Very yeah nice. but yeah I don't know. We just didn't mention that. Just real quick. Yeah. The no, we didn't. It's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. Frequent collaborators, the two of them, Fincher yeah. and Absolutely. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Mm-hmm. So I didn't expect them to be the composers at all for this movie. Yeah, I wasn't. I honestly didn't know. And at one point, I was like, "Man, this score is sick. Who did the score?" And then I thought about it. And I was like, "Oh yeah, probably them, right?" <laughs> like, I saw them in the titles in the beginning. And yeah, I was I like, oh, "Okay." It. But um, anyway. There's some things I like, some things I didn't. Overall, 
it's it's a real lackluster movie that I'm definitely gonna like forget about. Um, yeah, it's a it sucks because it's Fincher and it's 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 gonna definitely rank pretty low on his filmography for me. Maybe my least favorite. It might be my least favorite too, because everything else he makes is fantastic, and this is just or at least like interesting in a way. Like, like interesting Al- or like Alien dyna- Three, I wouldn't call fantastic. But the first yeah. hour is like pretty fucking cool, you know. I, mean, I, but, I still like that movie. But I still like I know Alien in, Three. I know I'm in the rare there. I always watch it, and I'm like, man, this is the time. And then by the end, I'm like, <laughs> no, I remember now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally. But anyway. um, all right, yeah, that's all right. Maybe it's down there, but I think it's probably even lower than Alien Three for me. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our review of Mank. Another disappointment in the year of 2020. Yeah. We need a hero, and it was not David Fincher with Mank. Damn it. When is our hero showing up? It's in those small Save. little films, I'm telling you. The yeah. small little ones we're not hearing about. Yep, exactly. Um, as always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and if you enjoy the show, maybe leave us a little review on iTunes, because every rating brings more listeners. You know, you, maybe. Come on. Maybe think about <laughs> it, you know? Think about it. You can email us at listen to us rant about movies at gmail.com. You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as one dollar. Visit www.patreon.com slash podcast. Alright, thanks Ronnie. Good good uh, episode, Zach. Yeah, thanks. thanks man. Thanks Ronnie. Thank you Wes. This was fun to be upset about mank (laughs) totally (laughs) all right till next time all right till next time thanks for listening to this listen to us roundabout movies podcast episode goodbye and i will see you again on the next show